partnership? No, I'm afraid it's with a client. Can Mr. Hearn help? I'm afraid I can't disturb Mr. Chillingham. I can't really say how long. Yes, I'll tell him. Yes. Bye. Mr. Chillingham? Mr. Chillingham? What's going on in there, Mr. Stafford? You'd better come in. I shouldn't bother. I've already checked. Mr. Chillingham is quite dead. I expect you'll want to call the police. Charles, quick! Get the police! Mr. Chillingham's been shot! He's dead, Charles! Sorry to drag you away from your very expensive lunch, sir. Anything happened since you phoned me? Not a thing. You run a check on him, have you? Uh, what's his name? George Stanford, sir. Not a sausage. Mm. It's all organised up there, isn't it? You know me, Chief Inspector, sir. Two witnesses, sir. Mr. Tower, Mr. Hunt. Any other stuff? Out to lunch, sir. No other way out that office, is there? All right, you better get on with it, then, Jack. So, what you doing, do something? Mr. George Stamford, we're police officers. I'm going to unlock this door and we're coming in. Understood? Ah, the gentleman of the law. On your feet, Mr. Stamford. Hands on the table. He's not harmed, sir. Mrs. George Stanford? Perhaps you'd like to tell us what happened, sir? Where is it? Hmm? The weapon, Mr. Stanford, where is it? The weapon? I'm sorry, I can't help you. I see. Look around, Sarge, you can't be far away. You, sit down. Chief Inspector Walters, what can you tell me about this man, Stanford? Well, we only met him today. Mm -hmm. I understand he lives abroad in Australia. His father was an old client of Mr. Chillingham. Mm. Why did he come here today? I told the sergeant I assumed it had to do with his father's estate. Old Mr. Stanford died recently. Mm. Uh, you're all right, miss. You don't want to cover tea or something? Oh, I'm fine. Lively company, is he, officer? Comedian. Hiding the weapon, that meant to be funny too. How can I hide what I never had? There's no sign of it about, sir. Or maybe he threw it out the window. Look below. Oh, and Jack. Don't come back without him. We'll find him, Mr. Stanford, and when we do, you'll be charged with murder. 
Until then, you're not obliged to say anything, but if you do, it may be taken down and used as evidence. Have you got that? Now, any more little gems of wit? Inspector. Chief Inspector Walters. Murder squad. Well, Chief Inspector Walters, you seem to have made up your mind about me. Mr. Stamford, this office is on the sixth floor. There's no other way in except through that door, which you locked from the inside. No one else has been in here. So only you could have killed him. And just two questions. Why you shot him and what you done with the weapon? Forensics here, lads. Say point two two or two five, but what else to do for sure? What range? I can't say yet. It was inside shot, though, wasn't it? Well, it's possible. It's also possible it came from that car park across the way. Oh, come on, Alec. This has got to be down to our friend here. Well, you could be right. It's a lovely shot, though, clean as a whistle. Uh, finished here, Chief. Look, make sure your lads give him a right going over. I want chapter and verse on him. No, get with you always get bloody. Well, he didn't throw it out the window, sir. That's for certain. All right, Jack. See that car park over there? Top to bottom. You don't really think we're going to find it there, sir. No, but it's the only other place a shot could have come from, on your way. Oh, for God's sake, do that in some other office. Problem time, is it? Mm. No weapon. You don't need one, laddie. It's got to be here somewhere. It's got to be. Oh, um, where'd they put Mr. Stanford? Oh, in the documents room, through there, Inspector. I see. Look, I'd like you to think carefully. After you heard the shot, did Mr. Stanford come out here, you know, even for a moment? No, Inspector, he couldn't have. He was locked in. Can you confirm that? Well, I was in my office at the time, but I did see Miss Tower lock the door, and it remained locked till you arrived. Mm. When you saw Mr. Stanford in the office, did he have a gun? I'm sorry. All I can remember is Mr. Chillingham lying there dead. My one thought was to get out. Hmm. There's nowhere inside that office that he might have hidden it. You know, uh, safe, for instance. The safe from the documents room. Oh, well, what do you keep in there? Confidential papers. Have you got a key? Yes. Perhaps we could have a look. They're in my desk. It's a rotten way for her to end her stint with this inspector. What? Well, Clarissa, Miss Tower, was leaving us at the end of the month. Oh, I see. Why was that? Personal reasons, Inspector. Not unconnected with marriage. I'll open the safe for you. Thank you. Is that all, Inspector? For a moment, thank you. Oh, please wait outside. Loyal secretary. Uh, she thinks I did it too. Didn't you? Why should I want to do a thing like that, Inspector? Oh, well, don't worry, Mr. Stanford. We'll find out. What was your business here? I believe I'm allowed legal representation. That's right. It's a one call, isn't it? May I? Thank you.
discussing my father's affairs for about um, ten minutes. Well, we'd both been smoking, the room had fogged up a bit, so Chillingham got up and opened the window. You don't believe me, do you? Well, he made a remark about the view, and um, then there was this noise. Well, I, I didn't think it was a shot at first, and then Chillingham fell. I thought he'd fainted, but when I saw the blood... So what you're saying is that he was shot by somebody outside the building? Well, it is the only possible explanation, isn't it? Do you know what a low-caliber bullet is, Mr. Yeah, Stanford? I have some idea, And yes. do you know what the chances of killing a man of that range are? Pretty remote, I Impossible, should Impossible, and we'll prove it too. Then we'll be left with just you, won't we? hate to labour the point, Inspector, but without a gun, I couldn't have shot him. <sighs> Clever bastard, aren't you? But this is just the start, Mr. Stanford. I'll find a weapon and a motive to go with it, and then I'm going to put you away. That's a promise. <laughs> Not what I'd call an impartial man, Inspector. It always come like you are concerned, sir. All right, take him away. Where the hell is it, Jack? Oh, I've looked everywhere, sir. I promise you that. Yeah, well, we'll wait and see what friends it come up with. If they rule out an outside shot, then we'll really slam into Stanford. If he's handled a weapon, it's bound to show up. I mean, all that garbage about an outside shot. He's just trying to throw us off. It's got to be in there somewhere. It's got to be. All right, Jack. Get some men out and tear the place apart. I want that weapon. Three bags full, Chief Inspector. Sir? Don't let me see your face till you found it. Right, uh, Peters, check every last detail of Stanford's past. Job, movements, the lot, right? Bert, work on the witnesses, especially the secretary. Check a flag, get a warrant if you have to. Noble, work on Chillingham, old man Stanford. Harris, keep it moving my way and fast. Now, I want a result on this one, so get weaving. Promotion is what's keeping me, Chief Inspector, sir. What? Uh, I'm just still looking, sir. Well, get on with it. I need that weapon. Is my lawyer here yet? Why'd you lock the door? I told you Chillingham locked it. Why? Because we had private business matters discussed. What private business? Why would you let me see my lawyer? The truth, Mr. Stanford. Then you can hold hands with whoever you like. Now, you say you weren't sure it was a shot you heard, is that so? First I thought... But it, it says here you're an ex-mercenary. You don't know the sound of gunshot. You're lying, Stanford. Oh, please yourself. You went in, you locked the door, you spoke a bit, then you let him have it. Admit it, Stanford. <laughs> Look, Inspector, you can't force me to admit something I didn't do. There's a long way to go yet. You will. Chief Inspector Walters, I'm not a fool. If I'd planned to kill Chillingham, do you seriously think I'd go to his office, lock myself in, shoot him and hope to get away with it? You did it, and then you disposed of the gun. How? I don't know yet, but I will, Stanford, I will. Now, let's go from the beginning again. Oh, you're a very persistent man. You don't know the half of it yet. <laughs> This is junk, Alex. Nothing on him. Oh, sorry, but the judge will take kindly to rewriting history. That shot came from inside Chillingham's office. You had to. No powder marks on his hands. I don't believe this. Well, find me a pair of gloves. And especially a low caliber gun, and I'll give you a case. I want that arrogant sod. Oh, personal, is it? Well, you could always lean on him a bit. Well, with an expensive brief breathing down my neck. Besides, Stamper's too smart to stampede under pressure. He's planned this. Without a weapon, he knows I'm going to be laughed out of court. Have a look at what ballistics say about the slug. No rifling marks. That's right. The weapon was rigged. Who made, you know? But a zip gun. I made up a bits and pieces. So find me just a piece of it, and you've got a case. A homemade job? Yeah, bits of metal. Stanford must have broken it down and hidden it. 
Just one piece, that's all I need. Sit down. From what you tell me, Chief Inspector, your case is purely circumstantial. So I must ask you either to charge my client or to release him. If you do not charge him and he is not released within the day, I shall seek a writ of habeas corpus. Anything else? No, except to point out, of course, that such procedure would hardly be welcomed by your superiors. <laughs> but I hope it will come to that. Walters? Jack, you found it? What, not even one bloody small piece of it? Hold it. Yes? Well, keep looking till I tell you not to. Excuse me, will you? What do you want? The connection between Stamford and Chillingham, sir. Looks like you've got a motive. When do I see my clown? You'll be lucky. Bit footloose, aren't you? Oil drilling in South America, mercenary, circus hand in Australia. You live there now, don't you? And run a small engineering factory. Tell me, why were you never tempted to go into your father's business? Well, we didn't get on, my father and I. Oh, you know how it is, Inspector. Successful father, wayward son. When did you last see him? About eight years ago. How did you learn of his death? Formal notice to the next of kin. Mm. Did it come as a shock to you? No, really. Knew he suffered from heart disease. Oh, how was that? Well-meaning friends, always someone wanting to reconcile the irreconcilable. How much money did he leave? About two million. Pounds, sterling. Didn't come to me, though. No, no, it went to research into heart disease. Yes, it? that's what my father intended, yes. It was a lot of money. Well, money was all my father had left to give, Inspector. My fault, I suppose. They do say I broke his heart, you know. Yeah, the Association for Medical Research. Yeah, my father's beneficiary. At least I believe that's what it called itself. So. You did know it was a fraud, didn't you? It was under investigation. Its president was due to face proceedings. And as we both know, the president of that association was chilling. You killed him because he cheated your father, isn't that so? Chillingham did need killing, even you must admit that, Inspector. And so you killed him. I deny that emphatically. Do you hear that, officer, emphatically? Come on, Mr. Stamford, we can prove time and place, the strongest possible motive. We even know what kind of weapon you use, so what more do we need? A gun. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. It was a zip gun, wasn't it? Now, that's easy enough to make for a man who's an engineer. You broke it down into little pieces, didn't you? You found such a weapon, even a small piece? Not yet. That's hardly the point, is it? I mean, we know how you did it and why. So come on now, admit it. Admit you killed Chilling. You are going to have to prove it, Inspector. And can you, without a piece of this gun? Hmm? Hold it. Dave? Yeah, I'll come in. Yeah, I know. Well, look, tell them. 8.30, Sunday morning, first tea. <laughs> Did I? What is it? The report on the witnesses, sir. Hearn is clean, but the secretary... Thanks, Harris. Uh, still looking, sir. Forget the weapon, Jack, and get back here. Bring Miss Tower in with you. Sir, Miss Tower has gone home. Well, go round and pick her up then. You've not been quite frank with us, have you, Miss Tower? I'm not sure I understand. Sit down. Get to him. Go! You told us you resigned. I intended leaving at the end of the month, yes. In fact, you resigned to avoid being fired. We know, Miss Tower, we found a letter to that effect in your flat. Now, why'd you lie? Well, Mr. Chillingham suspected I'd done something unethical. Such as? He believed I'd passed on confidential information to an outsider. It's Stanford, isn't it? He also lied to Mr. Hearn. There's no fiancé. You're not getting married. Now, why was that? There were reasons. Hmm? Oh, come in. Chair for Mr. Stanford. Oh, you know Miss Tower, of course, don't you? Of course. Rather better than you indicated. 
He wrote to you from Australia. She's not involved in this, Inspector. Why did you both lie about your connection with each other? I didn't lie. I said I'd never met him. Oh, just pen friends, is that it? Exactly that, Inspector. You told Stanford his father was being cheated by Chillingham, didn't you? Yes. Why didn't you tell us that? I didn't want to get involved. Oh, and is that why you lied to Mr. Hearn? It wasn't my place to tell him that his senior partner was dishonest. But you did tell Stanford. Now, why was that, if, as you say, you didn't want to get involved? I did it for his father's sake. No other reason? What other reason could there be? Your relationship with Stanford. You're serious. Oh, he's very serious indeed, aren't you, Inspector? You knew Stanford had come to this country for one reason and one reason only. That was to kill Chillingham. That's ridiculous. I second that. And as for you, you'd have us believe that no one else had gone into that office. Absolutely right. Wrong. One other person went into that office, you, Miss Tower. You went in, you took the gun from him, and then you disposed of it. There's no other possible way you could have left that office. But that's just not true. You planned this job together, didn't you? You listened to me, Chief Inspector. Uh? There was no relationship between us. I knew and respected his father. And I hoped for his sake there might be a reconciliation with his son. And there wasn't. And when he died and I found out what Chillingham had done with the money, well, that was too much. That's why I wrote to you. I hoped you'd do one last thing for your father. Force Chillingham to use the money the way it was meant to be used. I didn't want Chillingham killed. Inspector, who do you think put the fraud squad onto Chillingham? Chief Inspector Hyde. Fred, Walter's here. That tip-off you had about the Chillingham affair, remember? Who was your source? Well, I think it was someone in his house. Now, I know all that. Well, it was his secretary, I think, Mr. Tower. I see. Anything else that do? No, thanks, Fred. <laughs> Show Miss Tower out. I'll have my clothes back now, if you don't mind, Inspector. Clever bastard, aren't you? Put this in the end, Stanford. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I'm going to be there. I'll find that weapon, and when I do, we'll see you as the last laugh. Now, get him out of my sight. Yeah. You're never going to believe this, sir. What? Well, you remember last October, Stanford, the one that got away? What about him? You found out how he got rid of the gun. And if you thought for 2,000 years, sir, you'd never come up Get with on this. with it, Jack. Well, he did it all right, and there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. Well, see for yourself, sir. That's why, sir. Get the evidence. Gun, gloves, swallow the lot. Boop.